Welcome to New Line 99. This episode is about programming sound and speech. The sound chip in the TI-99 is the TMS-9919 sound chip, later called the SN-94624. The same chip was also used in the ColecoVision game system. The chip supports three square wave channels and has individual volume controls for each channel. There is also one noise generator. It has eight separate modes which use pulses to create periodic noise or white noise. And it also has its own volume control. In basic and extended basic, the different noise modes are played by assigning frequency of negative 1 through negative 8. There is a unique relationship between the square wave channel 3 and the noise channel. Two of the noise channel modes, negative 4 and negative 8, allow you to articulate the speed of the oscillation of the noise channel using the frequency of the square wave channel 3. The command to play sound in basic and extended basic is call sound. In parentheses, type in the parameters that specify the sound you want to play. First specify the duration of the sound in number of milliseconds. If you want the sound to connect smoothly with the next sound and not leave a gap, you can use a negative duration. As long as the first sound is long enough, the two sounds will overlap smoothly. Specify the sound frequency in cycles per second. Frequencies from 110 Hz all the way up to non-audible 44,733 Hz can be used in BASIC. The volume of a channel is specified as a number between 0 for the loudest to 30 for the softest. The TMS-9919 chip actually only supports 16 levels of volume, 0 to 15 as you'll find if you program sound in assembly language. And so, they padded the basic volume range for some reason. So if you want more than one sound to play at a time, after the duration, you can enter channel 1 frequency and volume, channel 2 frequency and volume, channel 3 frequency and volume, and the noise generator with its volume. Handling sound in assembly language has another caveat. When you're assigning the frequencies for the sounds, you don't use cycles per second, and instead you use a value that represents the amount of time between periods as it's known by the sound chip. So you'll probably end up looking up frequencies in a table a lot. The advantage of assembly language is that everything is handled faster than basic. So with something like music, where you need to modify it constantly, you have a lot more CPU time to handle all the things you need to handle. Use interrupts to remind you when it's time to go alter the music. And you can store the music data in a big list. Basic and extended basic can also include music that is programmed through code. The frequencies in modern music are evenly spaced, multiplying the twelfth root of two to the previous frequency. If you don't want to program a ton of musical frequencies separately, you can generate frequencies in a small loop and store them in an array. Managing complex sounds and sound effects from square waves and noise pulses is very difficult to do without spending all your processor time tinkering around with the sound channels. But if you're crafty, adjusting the volume, tinkering with overtones, using nearby frequencies together to create echo sounds, experimenting with the noise channel, you can come up with some interesting sounds. TI games utilize sequences of sounds to produce some fun and interesting effects. Let them be an inspiration to you. There is a TI software cartridge called Music Maker, which allows the user to write and play back sequences right on a music staff for those who know music. The TI Speech Synthesizer is a common peripheral to the TI-994A. It uses the TMS-5220 digital signal processor and connects as a sidecar to the right side of the computer. Or alternatively, there's also a way to install it in the peripheral expansion box. The peripheral expansion slot has a couple of pins that carry the analog signal to the motherboard and send it to the audio output along with the sound chip output. The synthesizer was designed to create an audio stream with timbres similar to the human voice using an algorithm called Linear Predictive Coding, or LPC. Texas Instruments had a whole department devoted to speech analysis and synthesis, and they did a fascinating amount of work on speech with integrated circuits through the 1980s. The speech synthesizer is a lot of fun to play with. If you're anything like me, there are some things that are really easy to accomplish with it, and others that will strain the limits of your tolerance. 
If you have both the speech synthesizer and the Terminal Emulator 2 cartridge, you can get BASIC to speak any words or phrases you like using text-to-speech. Welcome. You can even tell the speech synthesizer to speak a program listing. One zero call clear. Two zero print hello. Three zero end. One of the tricks I used to do as a kid was to write entire programs without a monitor connected. Connect a simple earphone across the two audio pins of the video port and have the TI just speak any output I needed. The way it works is, the Terminal Emulator 2 cartridge registers input-output devices available to BASIC, and you can open those devices and use them to produce synthesized speech. The syntax to do this is open, the device number you want to assign it, colon, in quotes, speech, comma, output. After that, you use print to that device number and type whatever you would like the speech synthesizer to say. It does have some pronunciation and interpretation flaws, but it does its best, which is still pretty remarkable. I am not a SAS instrument, ti 9 home computer, and I am a freelancer. Catapult. Unicorn. Jellybean. Subreddit. Speech mode also has some codes that you can use to give it a little help by indicating which syllables get stressed. It allows you to raise or lower the pitch of the voice. I can also speak with a higher pitch. Sometimes it is best to have a lower voice. <laughs> if you're having trouble with it pronouncing your text incorrectly, there's also a way to get it to speak using codes that stand for parts of vocal sounds called phonemes instead of text to speech. If you have both the speech synthesizer and the extended basic cartridge, you can get extended basic to speak from a list of predefined words. In the speech synthesizer, there's a resident vocabulary, a list of 373 words or phrases that it can just retrieve the codes for and speak. The command to speak in extended basic is call say, and in parentheses, you put strings that contain words from the predefined list. 30 words, shapes, printer, figure. Magenta, together, working. If you select one of the predefined phrases, you need to enclose the phrase in number sign characters. What was that? Texas Instruments. What if you want to say words that aren't on the list, though? There are some old tools that can do a, an LPC analysis of a digitally recorded audio file and convert it into TMS 5220 LPC data. But if you're one of the few that can get that to work, you're lucky. What you can do is use fragments of the code from resident vocabulary, sculpt and stitch them together, and adjust the rise and fall of the pitch of the new code to make your new phrases. But this is where it starts getting really tough to keep track of large amounts of data, and it sometimes takes a lot of tinkering. There's another extended basic command called spget. This command extracts the LPC code that the synthesizer itself uses to articulate the predefined phrase, and it places it as characters in a string. If you just print the string, it won't look like much of anything. But if you display the ASCII value of each character separately, you'll find there is a method to what it is. There always appears to be the same two-byte header, a length indicator, and then a bunch of numbers that presumably represent speech data. How do we figure out what all this is? <laughs> this is where we go deep in the weeds. Speech data is laid out in binary frames. Each frame contains an energy value, how loud the voice is, 1 through 14, a repeat bit, whether to copy the previous frame or not, a pitch value, which are like the vocal cords of a voice, and up to 10 reflection parameters, which are like what the tongue, teeth, and lips do to the voice. And this is called a voiced frame. There is also an unvoiced frame to mimic sounds like F, P, T, K, H, S, S, H, and C, H and it only uses the first four reflection parameters. In the case of a repeat, only the energy, repeat bit, and pitch are present. In the case of a silent frame, or a stop frame, only the energy value is there, with no other parameters. We pack all these bits in a stream, flip the bytes so that the highest bit is last, and that's how the speech is encoded. With this knowledge, we can actually dissect speech from the resident vocabulary and make new speech. For example, if I wanted Extended Basic to say, Welcome to New Line 99, let's check the list. There's no welcome, but there's well and come. I can mash those together along with two and create the first part. New Line isn't on the list, of course. Near has a starting end sound, 
and I can connect it to the end of the speech for the letter Q. New line is on the list. That gives us new line. Both 90 and 9 are on the list, so I just put them together. Adjust the pitch to make the phrase sound more natural. Recompile it into three pieces. Load it into three strings. Now we can use call say like we did before, leaving the first parameter an empty string and filling alternating parameters with our new LPC data. After it takes forever to load, we can finally hear the result. Welcome to New Line 99. Welcome to New Line 99. Welcome to New Line 99. It's a lot of work just to do that, but it can give your program some flair to have some custom speech in it. You might also be able to get the speech synthesizer to make non-vocal noises. Unfortunately, some TI-99 emulators are not good at emulating sound and speech. The hardware for the speech synthesizer is quite complex, and what it does is not well documented, even in the TMS-5220 manual itself. The catch-22 is that it's much easier to crunch weird data like this on modern computers where the emulator is sitting. That's all we have for this time. I hope you enjoy discovering sound and speech capabilities of the TI. So long from New Line 99.